Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today, and it's Whitney Prude. She is a weight loss coach, and she helps people learn how to keep the weight off and learn how to lose it healthy. And she's going to teach you today some great things that you can incorporate in your daily lifestyle to help you lose weight and to help you keep the weight off. So Whitney, it's an honor to have you on our show. I'm very excited to hear what you have to say. And so tell me a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. A little bit about me. So like, like you said, my name is Whitney Prude. I am a board certified clinical pharmacist and I, um, I work at the Mayo Clinic. I, right now I am actually more supplemental, I'm focusing more on my business, but I have been at Mayo Clinic for the last eight years as a pharmacist. And then I'm also a certified um, health and wellness coach. So certified through the national board and also certified through Mayo Clinic um, as a health coach and then also as a nutrition coach. So um, that's a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, kind of my credentials, but ultimately really and truly my passion is coaching um, and and helping individuals to really get their life back. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people really get stuck um, they, and they end up in places with their health that they never intended to be. And they have no idea how to get out. They try a million different things yeah. and some things work for a little bit and then, you know, they'll lose some weight, they'll gain everything back and, and just lose control again. And they, they go for years feeling very, very stuck. And yeah. ultimately my goal is to get people unstuck, to get people really to living their ideal life, um, that have their ideal health. Right. And essentially be in control of who they are and the way that they live. Oh, definitely. You know, I agree totally with you. I think it's so important. Nowadays, when you look at people, you look at our health in our society, you know, our health, our health has declined tremendously. You have diabetes that is like three times more than it's ever been. You have people struggling with weight loss. Obesity is up. Um, you know, you look left and right. You see, you know, so many medical conditions like, you know, heart problems, high cholesterol, you know, you know, high blood pressure, so many different things that are going on nowadays. And, you know, a lot of it, you know, has to do with, you know, what we put in our bodies and, you know, people, you know, really have to think about, you know, how important it is, you know, everything that we feed our body plays a, a, a total role mentally, physically, you know, and, and spiritually, because I believe, you know, totally when we put food in our, in our bodies and our body doesn't know what to do with it. I feel like, you know, it just stores that so stores it if it can't break it down and those toxins leach on to all over the place and our organs slows us down, can, you know, fog up our, our brain and, and our clarity and, you know, it can open us up to different conditions that we didn't have to have if we took care of our body in the first place, you know, uh, what are the things that you've seen today in our, the changes and, and some of the concerns that that you have when you see the way our society is changing when it comes to our eating habits and our health? I would say the biggest thing that I see uh, uh, kind of as like the underlying cause um, of where, where why people end up where they are is a lot of stress. I mean, yeah. we have a lot of stress, not, not only, um, in, you know, it was like things that we've been through in life, but in society in general, you yeah. know, there's, there's this, uh, misconception that like, we have to be busy in order to be successful or to be able to be worth something. Um, yeah. and a lot of times we weigh, we weigh our self-worth, um, on, you know, how busy we are and how much we can accomplish and how, how we show up for everybody else. And, and the, the real problem is that just as a as a society collectively we we very much put ourselves on the back burner we mm -hmm. abandon ourselves yeah um, trying trying to measure up trying to feel love trying to feel needed essentially filling a void inside of ourselves yeah and um it's it's <laughs> it's very unhealthy i yeah. i mean the stress leads to a million other things right it's like you're, oh, yeah. you're stressed your body starts holding on to you know, um, the, the calories so that it has enough to survive the stress, but then, yeah. you know, your sleep isn't as good. Your cravings are increasing. I mean, it, it all just, uh, you know, spirals and, right. uh, it all builds on top of each other. And, and before you know it, it's like, how the crap did I get here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I always say 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. You know, that's how dangerous stress is to us. We don't realize how much damage stress could do to us as human beings. 
you know, and, and you mentioned that, you know, some of the things that you feel are important is, is really work on, on people's mental clarity, you know, and their, and their emotions and not just losing the weight, but learn how to make yourself mentally and emotionally healthier. So you keep the weight off and maybe you can dive deeper into that and go a little bit in depth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's what I'm most passionate about the, of everything that I do and everything that we provide, you know, in our, in our programs and services, mental and emotional aspects are number one. They are absolutely the most important. And the reason is, I mean, if you look at the diet and weight loss industry, really and truly there's almost nothing there that addresses the root cause of why you gained weight in the first place. Yes. Right? It's really, I mean, it's fad diets, it's quick fixes, it's weight loss pills. Uh, if you go to the doctor, you know, and you you want to lose weight, they're they're going to try and put you on a pill. Um, even if they do give you some guidance, you know, there it's a very broken system. Even if they, yeah. you know, maybe they send you to a nutritionist, a nutritionist tells you, oh, this is how you can eat healthy, send you away. There's no accountability. There's no, you know. It, it's just, it's very, very broken and people just don't know how to get the help that they really need. Yeah. But we're never really, we're always looking at the food. We're always looking at, okay, well, you need to eat better and you need to exercise more, but we're never looking at why. Right. Why, why have we been eating in the way that we have been? Why are we not exercising? Why are we not taking care of ourselves? Why are we even here? What is driving our behavior? Yeah. The problem is, is that we always just want to slap a bandaid on everything. Just, yeah. you know, can we cover it up? Can we put a pill? Can we, you know, can we starve ourselves and lose 80 pounds, um, you know, in a couple of months yeah. and it's incredibly unhealthy. And we just, we never, we were never asking why, right. why in the world have I gotten here in the first place and what's keeping me stuck? Exactly. Exactly. And why do you find is the most common reasons why people, you know, tend to overweight? Is it coping with their emotions? Is that one of the main reasons you see people, you know, get putting weight on and, and having a tough time keeping it off? Emotions is the biggest. Um, but the the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that it's usually stems from somewhere in their past. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, over our entire lives, we have things that are building up and building up and building up and building up. And a lot of people, I mean, I would say probably the entire population has been through some sort of trauma. I mean, we all go through trauma. You yeah. know, sometimes we think of like trauma as like, oh, I was, you know, I was sexually abused or something like that, but it doesn't even have to be that extreme, right? right. It can be something much significantly smaller than that, but still be a traumatic experience. But regardless, we go through our entire lives going through challenging things, finding ways to cope, uh, molding and shaping ourselves into, you know, how do I survive in this world? How yeah. do I feel good enough? How do I measure up? How do I get people to love me? How do I feel needed and worthy? And over time, we develop all of these things. And then we get to adulthood and we, you know, we end up where we are. And it's like, why in the world, you know, like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why, like, why can't I control my food? Why don't I know how to regulate my emotions? Um, a, a lot of it just stems from never really being taught. Yeah. Like, how, how do I actually do this? How do I actually show up for myself? Right. And make myself important. We're always seeking outer ways to feel good enough, to feel accepted, to, you know, to just yes. fit in, in this world. When in reality, we can meet those needs for ourselves. We just yes. have to learn how. Um, and so honestly, I I truly believe that, you know, it's it's things from our past and it all builds up and we abandon ourselves along the way to try yeah. to be good enough, to try to fit in. And lo and behold, we end up using food or whatever else as coping mechanisms and we end up with health issues. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think people, you know, they look at, they have a low self-worth of themselves. And I think it stems from their, you know, from their roots, from where it all started, from their childhood, you know, or something traumatic happening along the way. And then, you know, when you have a low self-worth, you don't feel worthy of, of giving yourself self-love and taking care of yourself and putting your, your needs 
you know, first and, and some people feel guilt or shame, you know, and then some people feel like, you know, they, they, you know, a great way to ignore their own emotions is, is to focus on everybody else's emotions, you know, so they become people pleasers, you know, yeah, 100%. And, so, you know, but, and the last person they ever take care of is themselves and they're, they're the ones suffering, you know, so how do you, you know, what's step one, how do people, you know, start, you know, really, if they really want to lose weight and they want to keep it off and they want to feel good about themselves and they want to, they either say, oh, I love food or, you know, oh, you know, I just, you know, I just get stressed out and I eat blah, 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 blah. You know, what's step one? Like, where do they start? How do they begin? So step one is really starting to understand how your brain works. Yeah. Honestly. Um, because a lot of times, I mean, we go through the day, we have thoughts running through our heads like crazy. You know, we're all over the place. We're thinking about the past. We're thinking about the future. We're nervous about the future. We're, you know, um, we're, we're thinking about all of these things. We're drowning our emotions. We're trying to, you know, soothe with food and all of these things. Yeah. In reality, like we're not aware of anything that we're doing and why right. we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And so when, when we dive in step number one actually becomes diving into the brain and understanding right. how our brains actually work, um, and, and why they work in the ways that we do, but not only that, how do we start to actually train our brains to do what we want them to. Right. Once we really become aware of how our brains work and why they're doing the things that they're doing, right. Yeah. We can, we can use tools and resources and, um, and you know, with a decent amount of work, we can change our brains. We yeah. can get them to actually start doing what we want them to do. Right. Um, so that we don't, you know, we don't have to be lost in this, you know, be flailing around feeling like we're out of control in life. Um, that we can be very aware of what's going on inside of us, inside of our brains, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so I think, you know, the first step is the education and the awareness really right. starting to become aware of what's going on. Um, and then, you know, the, having the tools and the resources and the steps to actually overcoming um, the issues once we figure out what they are. Right. And what are some tools, common tools that you find helpful that people can maybe even do in their own homes to help them, at, you know, begin their journey to healthy weight loss? Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of different things. I mean, a lot of it is focused on, on you, uh, focusing on yourself, right? Yeah. One thing that I love to do, um, well, well, there's, there's two things that I'll share that are kind of just things that you can start thinking of right now. Um, and the, the first one is, um, when, when you start going to food mm -hmm. to start paying attention to why and asking yourself a few questions, because if food is a trigger for you, Mm -hmm. And if you dig into why you're doing what you're doing and you start working backwards, you can often start finding, you know, a lot of the things that you need to start working through and overcoming. Right. Okay. So if we use food as, as a trigger, and then we start working backwards, we can start by asking ourselves a few questions. Right. Now, the first question before you eat is, am I hungry? Mm -hmm. A lot of time, the majority of the time when we're eating or we're going for a snack, we're craving something, how often do we check in with ourselves and say, wait a second, am I hungry? Right. Okay. That's the first question. Am I hungry? Now, the second question is, if I'm not hungry, mm -hmm. why am I going to food right now? Yes. Am I stressed? Am I anxious? Am I sad? Am I lonely? Am I angry? Am I bored? Am I mm -hmm. not busy? So I don't know what to do with myself. And I'm trying to give myself something to do. Like, what is it? Why yeah. am I going to food right now? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to try to increase our awareness. That's right. The second question. Um, the third question is, if I'm not hungry, but I'm wanting food because I'm trying to meet a need. Right. Then what do I actually need? Because right. I'm not hungry. So the need is not food. Food gives my body energy and nutrients, yeah. mm -hmm. right? If I'm not hungry, I don't need food. Right. So what do I actually need? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then evaluating that, am I stressed? Am I anxious? Am I sad? You know, going through all of those things, what yeah. am I feeling and what do I need? And the fourth question is, how do I actually meet that need? Right. Instead of 
stuffing our face and trying to push down all of our emotions and, and, you know, try to avoid all of the emotions and everything that's going on inside of us yeah. we start to ask the harder questions, right? What do I, what do I actually need? How do I show up for myself? How do right. I actually meet that need? Yes. So that's, the, that's, that's one big takeaway that people can use to start being aware of mm -hmm. why they're doing what they're doing and starting to work backwards to start to figure some of these things out. Okay? Right. That's just a basic first step. The second thing that I would say um, is helping people to start thinking about priorities. Mm -hmm. Now, this is always, I do this with all of my clients and mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, I have people list out their priorities. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we list out priorities from number one down to number five. Right. And I have people list them and, and what do they say? Well, okay. So my kids are number one. My spouse is number two. Um, religion might fall in there somewhere. Work probably falls in there somewhere. Friends and family falls in there. And that that's, you know, their, their top five that they give me. Yeah. And my question is, well, where are you on the list? Right. And it's like, I've blown their mind of like, oh my gosh, like I'm not on the list. Yeah. We are never on our own lists. Right. And that's the problem. We need to not only be on the list, but we need to be number one on the list. Yes. So helping people to start making, to start to make a shift of instead of putting 20 things above you on the mm -hmm. priority list, you start making yourself number one. I'm number one. My health is important. And a lot of people will say, well, that, but that's selfish. That feels selfish. Like I need to be there for all of these other people. I need to, you know, I need to be doing extra at work and I need to, you know, I need, I need, I need to do all of these things. And the reality is, is that if we start digging into it, well, do you want to be around for your kids 20 years from now? And do you yeah. want to be independent? And do you want to be able to show up for them? And you want to be able to be there for your grandkids? Well, yeah, of course I do. Well, do you want to be healthy when you're there for your grandkids? Well, yeah, of course I do. Well, then you have to put yourself first. Right. You have to put yourself at the top of the priority list, or you're never going to be able to continue to show up for everyone that you want to show up for. Exactly. So those are, I mean, those are just two really quick, easy um, ways right now to start increasing your awareness and to start mm -hmm. shifting your mindset towards what's really going on. What am I really doing? How am I really living my life? And, yeah. you know, where am I placing myself on the priority list? Right. And what are good ways for some people to give themselves a little self-love? Because since some people, you know, most people neglect giving themselves self-love, what are some ways that you would say, you know, these are good things you should incorporate into your daily lifestyle? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. And I think that a lot of times self-love is confused with self-care. There's mm -hmm. a lot of like rave these days about yeah, yeah. like self-care, self-love, and I'll ask, you know, it's like, I'll ask people the question, well, like, do you feel like you genuinely love yourself or you yeah. genuinely care about yourself? And they're like, oh yeah. Like I spend money on myself all the time. I'll go get my nails done. I'll go get a massage. Um, sure. Right. You're spending money on yourself. You're taking care of yourself. Right. But it's, it's very different. Um, just self-care is very different than actual like self-love and mm -hmm. genuinely deeply loving and caring about yourself. Right. Um, when you really start showing up for yourself, it's a much deeper and more intimate, much more emotional type um, process. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And, and it's kind of when I talked about, you know, the, the four questions that you ask yourself, yeah. when you start asking yourself, um, you know, why am I going to food? What do I really need? And how do I meet that need? Right. You are actually starting to show up for yourself because it's really, I mean, really and truly it's emotional intelligence, right? Yeah. You're noticing, you're, you're noticing a feeling, you're feeling something, you're acknowledging that feeling, mm -hmm. right? And then you're, you're starting to say, well, what do you know, what do I need to do to show up for myself right now? What do I need right. to do to address this feeling, to support myself through this, like whatever I'm dealing with, how do I, you know, do I need to get some help? Is there something that I can do for myself? Um, 
where we really start thinking of ourselves at a much deeper level. Right. A lot of people don't like to go there. Yeah. You don't like to go inside. You don't like to, you know, it's like, oh, no, no, no. I don't, you know, I don't think about me. I don't, um, you know, I don't want to talk about me. I don't want to, I don't want to go there. I don't want to talk about the herd. I don't want to talk about emotions. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go there. Right. And we don't. So we eat food instead or, <laughs> you know, or do other things. We find other ways to cope. Yeah. Um, but, but ultimately, I would say really genuine self-love is taking the time to pause and say, hey, what's going on? Right. What's going on in there? You know, right. how are you feeling? And like, what do what do I actually need to do for you? How do right. I, you know, how can I actually show up to like help us get through this? Right. Um, that's showing up for yourself. That's mm -hmm. caring about yourself. Being brave enough, you know, to look inside and say, what's up? Mm -hmm. Like, why, you know, like, why are we hurting? Why, you know, what's yeah. going on? How do we get through this? I like that. I like that. You know, I think, cause I think a lot of times we, we tend to, you know, forget about how that, that we need to love ourselves. You know, I think most people forget about that. And, and it's not about buying shoes or doing our eyebrows or, you know, getting our hair done, you right. know, it's about really putting yourself first. Like, you know, are you taking time out to care for your body? You know, are you, are you maybe giving yourself, you know, maybe 15 in the minutes in the morning to just meditate and just, you know, clear your mind and, or, you know, do stretches or exercise for you or go around the block and take a walk by yourself and just, you know, explore nice weather and nature and, and have some exercise size incorporated into that, you know, and a lot of people say, yeah, 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 I want to do that, but I never have time, you know, and uh, you, you know, that that's a, a, a common thing I hear. I don't have the time, you know, but, you know, we always can make the time, you know, it's, it's really putting our priorities in line. How much do we value ourselves? I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's just it. If you become number one on your priority list, there is always time for your first priority. Right. Because it's number one. So you fit it in first yes. and then you fit everything else in. Mm -hmm. And so I completely agree with you that, you know, I get people all the time. They're like, I can't do your program because I don't have enough time. Like <laughs> We work with busy professionals. Like that's who we work with. Yeah. And there's always time. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people, their, their biggest problem is, is that it, it kind of comes back to this self-worth thing where we put, we want to please other people. We want other people to like us. And so we start putting more and more and more onto our plates when in reality, we need to start saying no to things. Yes. Um, and so I always, I always will tell people, you know, if you're, pri if you're number one on the priority list, and let's say you take your top three priorities, that might be you and your health, your kids and your spouse. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then anything else that comes your way. Right. Somebody wants you to take on a responsibility or join something or whatever. Yeah. If bringing that thing and saying yes to that thing compromises your top three priorities, meaning that you don't have time to fit in your health, eating healthy, exercising, getting your sleep, you know, the things that you need to do for yourself. If it right. compromises that or your family, the answer is no. Right. It's that simple. The answer is no, it doesn't fit because it's compromising your priorities and you make time for your priorities first. Yes. So we don't have time because our priorities are skewed. Yeah. But if we reevaluate and say, Oh, actually these are my priorities. Yes. And then I start living my life in line with my priorities. Right. There's time. What about those people who feel either shame or guilt? Like they feel like, oh, you know, it's, it's so wrong for me to put, you know, myself above my kids or, you know, they feel, you know, they always have to put their their spouse or their kids first, you know, and yeah. they, they feel like they're doing something bad if they don't. Yeah. And it's it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's a hard process and it's a very uncomfortable process. Yeah. And I always tell people, you know. If, if you're uncomfortable on the journey, mm -hmm. then you're doing it right. Right. Because that means that you're working towards change. You're pushing yeah. yourself, right? You're right. pushing yourself into the discomfort. And so, you know, for those, for those people that really, you know, do, they feel the shame, they feel the guilt. I mean, we, we just have to start taking small steps. 
Yeah. And a lot of times that first step is saying no to somebody, right. you know, and, and then sitting, like sitting in that feeling of like, I did it and I knew I was going to feel ashamed or I knew I was going to feel guilty or I was going to feel bad for doing it, but you yeah. just have to let it be. Right. And the more that you do it, right. And that's, you know, that's along the lines of starting to change our brain. If yeah. we want to change something, we have to start doing something different and do yeah. it consistently. So we start, you know, the more that you start saying, wait a second, I'm the number one priority. And yeah. So I'm saying no to this person. In the beginning, it's going to feel absolutely awful. You're right. going to feel terrible. Yeah. But the more that you do it and mm -hmm. the more that you start to build your own self-love yeah right? like oh actually like I do get to make myself a priority and it actually does feel good to have me time to have right. a little bit of time set aside each day for me to really focus on what do I need how do I stay healthy at, in in the end right yeah. it's going you're going to master it but right. it's going to feel incredibly uncomfortable in the beginning and that's yeah. just the reality of change there's no way around that and I think it's so hard for especially people pleasers to say no, because they're mm -hmm. so used to just like wanting to please, always want, yep. you know, not make anyone upset. And, you know, they're so worried about pleasing others that I think it's a very difficult task for them. How do you break through that task? Because like, I know so many people who are good hearted people and I call them people pleasers because they never say no. And then I see people taking advantage of them because they're such nice people and they're always saying yes, that, you know, Sometimes people do take advantage of them. You know, how do you get to that point where you you have enough of strength and enough of confidence within yourself not to worry how that person's going to feel about you and be able to say, no, it's not healthy for me. It's not good for me. I'm sorry, but I can't do it. Yeah. So honestly, the confidence isn't just going to come. Yeah. You have to, you have to step into it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you have to say the first no. Usually what I'll do with clients when we're working through something like that and we're yeah. really like diving in and it's like, it's a scenario like you're talking about where it is just like terribly, terribly difficult for someone to yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. Then we really dig in and we find a very specific scenario of like one instance where they can never say no. Right. You know, it's like, it happens all the time and they can't say no. And they're so worried about how this person's going to feel. Um, I just had a recent conversation with someone where uh, their coworkers will bring in like sweets to work right. <laughs> and they can't, they can't say no, they, they won't do it. They feel absolutely awful. Right. They, you know. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll dive in and we'll really walk through this scenario. We'll talk about like, okay, so someone's bringing in treats. Yes. Are they bringing in the treat specifically for you? Mm-hmm. Right. So there's a different, it's a different scenario if they're yeah. just bringing in treats for the work environment, or if they're bringing in treats and they're like, I know that you love this. And I took the time out before work to go get you this and bring you it. Right. Okay? Exactly. Very different scenarios. So, you know, we walk through the scenario. Like if we're walking through a scenario, someone brought treats in to work for everyone. Yeah. You have absolutely no obligation to eat that. Right. And even if someone offers it to you, they're like, there's no feelings of like, you know, I brought this in special for you. No, they're just bringing sweets in for everyone at work. Exactly. So we'll help to walk them through that scenario and exactly what they could say of like, oh, no, I already ate lunch. Like, you know, I, yeah. I'm not going to, I don't want that right now or um, not really feeling like sweets or, you know, just like things, things that they could actually say. Yeah. Um, so that when it comes up, they're prepared and ready with right. what they're going to say to turn it down. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So, so that's kind of in, when it's in really extreme situations where people really, really struggle with it, then we'll, we'll dive in more to the specifics and we'll help them um, to really know exactly for that first one, especially. Yeah. Exactly. How does the scenario go? How do we prepare you? And what are you going to say? And right. then you're going to feel crappy. And then this is how we're going to walk you through it. Right. And, and what about those people who use it as a coping mechanism and they use food to just cope with their stress and their emotions? You know, how do you change your mindset or how do you like 
not use food so much as an addiction to cope with your with your inner self, inner problems, whatever is 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 causing you to have unsettled emotions. You know, how do you not reach for that that bagel or that donut, and you you know you you do something more productive? Like, how do you you switch off the light and go to and do it do it differently? I wish it was as easy as just switching off the light. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to use that as a metaphor. Right now. <laughs> there, there are varying degrees of emotional eating mm -hmm. and like food, food addiction. Yeah. Um, there are, there are clients that I have where food has been their best friend their entire life through all of their struggles and challenges. Yeah. And for those clients, it is very, very challenging. And right. we've, we've even gone to the point with, with some clients where we've actually, we've actually had a funeral for food, right? You know, it's like, this is your best friend. They have been there with you through thick and thin, through everything. It always showed up. Right. It was always there. It always made you feel better. Like, mm -hmm. this is how you survive. Okay. And even just bringing up the idea of a funeral for food of like your friend is going away, they'll get very, very emotional. Yeah. This is a real relationship. Right. They have with food. Um, that's, that's like very, very extreme. And it's, it's a long process. Um, mm -hmm. It takes a lot of work of, of working through why they need all of that comfort and support right yeah and the reality is is that it's stemming from their past it's stemming to, to back to like what they've been through trauma challenges in life how people have treated them all mm. of those things right it's stemming yeah. back to that because that's what they have used to cope through their whole life right well now if you're going to overcome that what we have to do is we've got to actually go back and, and work through and process all of those things. Yeah. And for some people, if it's, you know, if it's a lot of trauma, well, then we've got to, you know, we'll send them to a, a trauma therapist. Like you've yeah. got to work through these things mm -hmm. and overcome these things right. to the point that we can actually get rid of your crutch. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's a matter of processing a lot of those things. Um, and then on the flip side, um, once you like, once you process the things on the back end, it's also a matter of learning how to regulate your emotions on yeah. the end, right? So starting the, the, the process of, of being aware, starting the process of, okay, what am I actually feeling right now? Yeah. How do I work myself through these emotions? Right. What are the tools and resources that I have that aren't food? to actually help me to work through and regulate these emotions and deal with right. these emotions instead of trying to, you know, stuff my face and swallow. Exactly. My face. So um, that's, that's in the very extreme degree yeah, yeah. Of, of like what the process looks like, but when it's not as extreme, you know, which I mean, the general population, I would say everybody probably emotionally eats in some way yeah. at some point in, in varying degrees, but the process is the same. It just doesn't doesn't take as much work if it's not as uh, deep and you know not as much of a deep rooted issue. I guess you could right. Say. Do you do you suggest having a food journal? Because some people, you know, we tend even anybody really, you could eat and not realize how much you're eating. And then when you keep track of what you're eating, then you're realizing, wow, you know, I ate more than I thought I did, you know? So, you, yep. so do you recommend food journals or like, how do you, you know, ha help somebody be aware of, you know, what they're actually consuming and how much they're consuming? Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good question. So, so what we do in our program is we'll have people We'll give guidance on on how to make healthy choices and yeah. you know, healthy meals and how to do easy quick meals. But then we do have um, we do have people track. So we right. have an app where we're tracking uh, calories and also macros. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we do it is just like what you were saying is it's a ton of education just to start tracking because yeah. all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, I just ate a piece of pizza and it's 500 calories. A right. third of my calories for the day are gone and I have one slice of pizza, Yeah. right? 
Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you look at your macros, it's like, oh, okay, well with this slice of pizza, I just ate all of my carbs and fats for the day. And now all I have is left is protein. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you're, you're really learning when you're, when you're tracking it's, it's a lot of education. So it's not intended to like make you obsess about your food. It's more education to realize, okay, so this is how, you know, I can adjust things to learn how to eat balanced and know how many calories are in certain things. Um, so we do, we do have people track food. However, um, that's not a long-term solution. You can't track your food for the rest of your life. No. So, yeah. so what we do is we have people track during the program because it's really, it's important to track while you're on a weight loss journey, right? Yes. Because I need to be able to see data. I need to right. see what you're eating how your body's responding, and then how can I give you guidance to make sure that we keep you moving towards your goal, right? Right. So I need data while we're on this weight loss journey, but by the time you get to the end of the program, yeah, you know, you know how you've been doing it for four months, right? You know what you can eat in a day. You know how much everything, you know how many calories all of this stuff is. Yeah. And so, you know, you basically are just doing it in your head of like, okay, yeah, this is about, you know, this is about where I'm supposed to be. Right. Or, you know, if I'm going to go out to dinner tonight, then that's going to be about a thousand calories. Well, you know, my breakfast and my lunch need to be a little bit smaller today. Right. So people start to learn that. And that's, that's just a process, right? It's a whole process of learning, of education, because we want people to know how to do this forever. Right. So you have to have the knowledge, you have to have the education, you have to know your body, you have to be able to listen to your body and yes. what it tells you and be able to depend on your hunger and fullness cues and say, okay, now right. my body's, you know, it's at a healthy place and it's telling me, you know, as long as I'm eating healthy foods, we're full. Right. Stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, exactly. And so it's just, you know, it's a process of getting there. So, you know, tracking during your weight loss journey and a little bit during your maintenance to figure out what your maintenance calories look like. But then in the long term, you've learned how to eat healthy and you don't have to track for the rest of your life. Right. Exactly. Yes. I like that. Cause I think some people feel so stressed because they feel like they have, they have to do this, this, and this, and this, but after a while it becomes part of your, your healthy living, you know, and, and you just incorporate it into your life. And then after a while, I don't think most people even realize it just becomes natural, you know, after yep. a while. Yeah. And you just, you just know how to do it. And that's, yeah. you know, that's ultimately, that's all, that's our goal. Right. We, we want our clients to essentially at the end of the program say, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Thanks for the help. I don't need you and I don't need anybody else either, you know? So that's a good um, coaching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, essentially I'm coaching myself out of business, right? But um, I'm I'm passionate about providing a, a really good quality program. Right. And there, you know, I mean, there's mi- hundreds of millions of people that could come into my program. I'm never going to run out of people that could come into my program, right? 100%. So I would rather do the world justice um, exactly. and make sure that I'm being true to myself and my values and honestly give people what they deserve. And, exactly. and that's, you know, the knowledge and education that they need to be able to transform their lifestyle and maintain it for the rest of their life. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and like emphasize on a couple of important aspects, what are some things you'd like the l- listeners to understand? My, my biggest thing that I, that I really try to get people to understand is that there is no quick fix. Yes. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks that they're, you know, they're going to find that miracle solution that all of a sudden is just going to get all of this weight off and make them healthy. Exactly. It does not exist. Exactly. You have to do the work. You have to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to maintain it. And you have to get yourself to a point where you care about yourself enough that you keep doing it. Exactly. And I mean, if you don't do those core things, yeah, you're going to stay, you're going to stay stuck on the roller coaster and, and in a yo-yo the rest of your life. Like there's no way out except going through and actually doing the hard work. Right. Exactly. Exactly. 
And if, go over again, like you have the 12, is it a 12 week program? You said 16 weeks, 16 weeks. So you yep. have the 16 week program. Now, do you have anything else that you offer besides the 16 week program? So we, we have two different 16 week programs. Okay. And so we've got one where we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's our premium program. Um, and a lot of times that's, uh, you know, I mean, it's valuable for everyone, any human being, you know, that wants to improve their health could go through that program. But the reason, um, that we stick with one-on-one -on -one coaching, as opposed to like trying to throw everybody into a big group and, you know, yeah. it's like scale the business, whatever is because with mental and emotional issues and challenges, mm -hmm. it takes a lot. Yeah. And it takes support and it takes guidance and, you know, somebody else noticing, pulling things out um, and also pushing you, pushing yeah. you into doing uncomfortable things. And so on the mental and emotional side, yeah, uh, we wouldn't be very successful if we didn't take one on one time with our clients. Right. So, um, so we have the 16 week program with one on one um, where we we really are diving in deep. Um, and, and helping to push people along, make sure they get all the way to the end of the program. We do have a group program, but we keep it small group right? Um, so that, you know, it's, we, we created it so that it's more financially affordable, yeah. um, but that you still can get a ton of value because, you know, it's, it's a small group. You still have time with your coach. Everything's still customized to you. You're still getting weekly check-ins and, mm -hmm. um, working with the same coach the entire time. So, we we've built it so that from a from a value standpoint, you get tons and tons of um, of help, support, and guidance from your coach. Yes, um, and we've found that that's you know that's the biggest thing that yeah. um, that brings success in the end is the support. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I think it's good that you do the one-on-one -on -one coaching because I think sometimes it can get a little emotional and oh, sometimes yeah. it's hard for people to, to, you know, speak in front of other people, even though they're all there for the same reason, it still sometimes could be hard to open up. And that's, and, and that's why I've always struggled with group coaching, because I know that in a group program that we're not going to be able to dive in as deep. Um, mm -hmm. And so on the group calls, we don't. But one thing that I did incorporate into our group program is that we still have a one on one call. Um, we give every every person in our group program a one on one call where we take a really deep dive into the mental and emotional stuff yeah. to help them, but also to help us as coaches to know what their barriers are going to be throughout the program so that right. we can continue to help them and push them. Um, so we've, so we've tried in, in every way possible. And I've experimented with this a lot. We've tried really hard in our group program to make sure that we're still giving, uh, you know, a significant amount of value and digging yeah. enough into the mental and emotional piece that we're still going to be able to push these people forward. I like that. I like that a lot. And you also have a giveaway, don't you? You said on your website. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, we have a, a giveaway. This is uh, this is my favorite giveaway and one that, that people really are, are quite drawn to. And it's a, a metabolism boosting guide. A lot of people, you know, when they're like on this weight loss journey, especially women, you know, once you get into, you know, yeah. late 30s, 40s, 50s, it's like my metabolism is shot. Like, oh, I, yeah. you know, it's like I'm gaining weight, <laughs> and, you know, I can't lose like I used to. And everyone's like, what happened to my metabolism? Um, so there's tons of talk around metabolism. So what we have as our free giveaway is a metabolism boosting guide, basically nine different steps of like how you can actually boost your metabolism right. all in healthy ways. It's not, you don't have to throw on a supplement. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to do crazy things. And usually yeah. when you do crazy things, it actually hurts your metabolism as opposed yes. to helping it. Right. right. So exactly. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, how do you boost your metabolism? Well, you start implementing a lot of healthy habits. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's very true. It's very true. Now, where can people get in contact with you? Yeah, so there's a couple of different places. You can always visit my website. It's myholeandhappylife.com or Instagram is a really good place to, you know, send my team a message um, and talk with me personally. And my my Instagram is the same, myholeandhappylife, just with an at symbol in front of it. So if you just remember myholeandhappylife, and come find us on Instagram or, you know, you can find us on the internet. Um, 
We always offer a free um, first call, like a discovery call with anyone that's interested in talking with our team and seeing, mm -hmm. you know, what, um, if we can actually help them. And then right. also, you know, making sure that our program's a good fit, because I don't ever want to put anyone in my program yeah. unless we're confident that we can get them where they want to go. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. It's been it's been wonderful having you on the show, Whitney. I hope you'll come back. Maybe we could talk more in depth because I think there's so many different things about weight loss that we could talk about because there's so many so much so much fake nudes and and fads and and trendy diets that you hear all the time. And you know, weight loss has become a billion dollar business. You know, all the supplements, all the weight loss pills, and everything. And you know, it's really it, it could be very simple if it if you approach it the right way, you know, and it can be very natural, you know, and, and really actually the natural way is the more efficient way. And, and, and you get the best results out of the natural way than anything else in the long run, for sure. Yeah. In the long run. And that's what you want. You don't want to lose. And a lot of times two people don't realize that if you go through some of those, those fast, you know, fast uh, fad diets and you lose all the weight all at once. A lot of people get droopy skin and their body wasn't used to like losing weight so quickly because it was so unnatural. People start to wrinkle and their their skin gets droopy because the elasticity, you know, it, it, it's just not normal for the body. The body can't just like, it, it's not a rubber band, you know? Yep. And, and yeah, uh, they look sick. <laughs> they look sick afterwards. Yeah. So, yep. you know, doing it the natural way and, and really looking at the root cause and what, why you're gaining weight and, and then, you know, tackling those, those obstacles and making sure that, you know, you overcome them. So it never comes back. That's the way to go. So I give you a thumbs up. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And then, you know, I hope to hear from you soon and, and thank you so much for your time today. This has been amazing. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too.